Hi everyone, welcome to Imaging Study. Today we are going to see a case of molar pregnancy. A 22 years old female patient came with amenorrhea for more than 4 months. She also gave history of pervaginal bleeding for several days. Her urine for pregnancy test came positive. She was sent to us for a transvaginal ultrasound scan. Let's see the transabdominal ultrasound finding first. Here is the longitudinal section of the uterus on transabdominal ultrasound. You can see an ecogenic central uterine mass with multiple cystic spaces. This is the largest cystic space. There is no definite fetal pole seen. The urinary bladder was partially filled as this patient came for transvaginal ultrasound scan. Here is the transverse section and you still can see this hyperechoic central uterine mass with internal diffuse cystic spaces. Here is the color Doppler image and you can see the lesion is getting supply from adjacent uterine vessels but it is not hypervascular like what we see in our venous malformation. So this feature suggests it as a case of molar pregnancy. Transabdominal ultrasound is enough to say this as a case of molar pregnancy but if you want to evaluate the invasion of the myometrium or peri or parametrium then transvaginal ultrasound would be a better option. Here's the pictures. You can see the longitudinal and transverse section of the uterus containing the molar pregnancy. Here's the color Doppler image. Now let's jump into the transvaginal ultrasound scan. Here's the longitudinal section of the uterus. You can see hyperechoic central uterine mass with diffuse cystic spaces forming the snowstorm or honeycomb appearance, which goes in favor of molar pregnancy. You can see the myometrium quite well visualized here as a hypoechoic area beneath the perimetrium. We want to evaluate each and every part of the myometrium to exclude any chance of invasion. There is no definite exophytic mass or large lacunar vessel noted at endomyo junction. Here is the color Doppler image. You can see there is good amount of peripheral vascularity but the lesion itself is not hypervascular. Now we are checking the junction between the myo and endometrium in each and every corner to exclude presence of any tornado vessel. This vessel took my attention as it is a very prominent vessel. On first impression, I was a little bit confused about any invasion at that part, though there was no prominent lacunar vessels noted on b -mode ultrasound. There was no exophytic mass also at that point, and myometrial thickness was also normal. So on my impression, it was the peripheral vessels which appeared prominent when I was sweeping the transducer. Tell me in the comment box below what you think of this part. Is that an invasive mole? Here is the picture of the uterus in transvaginal ultrasound and you can see the molar pregnancy with snowstorm appearance. Other pictures, you can see this hyperechoic mass with internal cystic spaces forming the honeycomb or snowstorm appearance of molar pregnancy. Here is the color Doppler images and you can see peripheral vascularity, no prominent tornado vessels or bridging vessels, only the peripheral myometrial vessels are seen supplying the lesion. Another picture and this was the prominent vessel. We have already uploaded a case of invasive mole on our YouTube channel where we have shown you the appearance of invasive mole on transabdominal ultrasound as well as on MR scan. So don't forget to check that video. I always tell you to take sample from each and every pathology that you get. This will help you understand the Doppler findings much better than reading those complicated books.
Here is the supplying artery showing a monophysic wave pattern with a low impedance flow. The resistive index was 0.52. Can you tell me what will be the resistive index if this was a choriocarcinoma? No need to remember, but can you tell me whether the resistive index would be higher or lower than this one? Tell me in the comment box below. So, in summary, a bulk uterus is seen. There is heterogeneously ecogenic central intrauterine mass with internal diffuse cystic spaces without any associated fetal part forming the snowstorm appearance. Color Doppler shows low impedance flow towards the lesion. So this feature is concluded as a case of molar pregnancy, preferably the Hida TD form mole. Now the take home message. Molar pregnancy can be easily diagnosed on trans abdominal ultrasound as we have seen already. But the TVS and MRI help exclude invasive mole. During reporting the molar pregnancy, you should ensure the clinician about the absence of tornado-shaped bridging vessels, myometrial thinning, and exophytic mass, which are features of invasive mole. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more. See you on the next one. Have a nice day.